Hey, I'm Felissa Rose, and you're watching Keto and Crime. Hey everyone, welcome to Keto and Crime. Uh, today I'm going back to my old, <laughs> my old OG YouTube uh, format, and that's reactions. Um, I thought I would react to some snippets from both Chad and Lori's uh, hearings uh, from a few days ago, um, just so that we can comment on uh, what was said, kind of their body language, their responses, just so that we can get a good gauge of what's going on, because... I have a feeling someone is singing like a canary. I really do. Um, one of them, if not both of them, are probably competing with each other on who can throw the other one under the bus the furthest and the, and the fastest. Um, that's my guess, especially with we know Zilema has already been offered some sort of immunity for her testimony, as well as I'm sure Melanie Gibb is cooperating as well, but with... The things that are about to come out, I hope Melanie and David, I've also lawyered up because they're probably going to need it. But uh, in any case, uh, we're going to listen to a few snippets from both of the Zoom trials um, that were had the other day, just so that we can see. And I find it telling that uh, Chad, and <laughs> someone called him Chad the Chin the other day, and I about... Uh, I had to go change my drawers. Be because <laughs> I almost, uh, you know, <laughs> wet my drawers when I read that comment, I had never heard that, but now that I look at him, it's quite fitting, but, um, he's still very smug, still very smug sitting there, so, anyway, I thought this would be fun, a nice little change to our normal format, so, let's get into it, I'm gonna start the video. 2021, case number CR 2221-1623, State of Idaho versus Chad Guy Daybell, Present here on the Zoom call, I have Mr. Daybell appearing with his counsel, Mr. Pryor. I have Mr. Wood, who represents the state. Also, Ms. Blake, who's here representing the state. I have a court reporter and someone from the Idaho Supreme Court for technical issues. Uh, Wonder if that is a private lawyer that Chad has or if that's a public defender. I need to research that. If you know, let me know down below. Is he paying him big bucks or is the taxpayers paying for it? Anyway, uh, this is the date and time for an initial appearance. Mr. Daybell, can you hear me okay? Yes. Can you hear me? I need me? you to speak a little bit louder, Mr. Daybell. Yes, I can hear you. Mr. Daybell. Uh, I want to slap that smile off his face. I just want to slap it. I, I, ugh. Uh, the purpose of today's initial appearance is to go through your rights to talk about the date for future hearings, to talk about counsel, uh, and a few other things. Mr. Daybell, did you uh, review a copy of the notification of rights form that was sent down to the jail prior to this hearing today? Yes. Do you understand your legal rights here today? I do. Mr. Pryor, did you go through that notification of rights form with your client? Yes, Your Honor, I did. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Daybell, did you receive a copy of the indictment that was filed on May 25th, 2021, a warrant that was filed on that same date? Yes, I did. Did you have a chance to review that with your counsel, Mr. Pryor? He did, Judge, and we have no questions at this time. Mr. Pryor, uh, it's my understanding from a review of the notification of rights that your client is waiving a formal reading of the indictment. If it's okay with you, I'll just go through each charge. I think he's waived that full reading at every single trial that I have uh, watched, every single hearing that I have watched with him. He's waived the right. I don't know if it's 
just he wants to speed things along or maybe he doesn't want to hear what he's most likely done read out in graphic detail but uh or either he just considers this entire process beneath him and doesn't want to be subjected to it i don't know but anyway and the maximum penalties, I'm not going to go through the allegation contained in the charge. That's appropriate, Your Honor. Ms. Blake or Mr. Wood, any objection to that? No, Your Honor, I think that's appropriate. No objection. All right. Mr. Daybell, the indictment, uh, like I said, is case number CR 2221-1623. It was filed on May 25th, 2021 in the indictment. There are nine counts. I'm going to go through the counts that are relevant to your case. The first count is conspiracy to commit first degree murder, uh, as well as grand theft by deception. So I was right. They have added more to that. I thought that just the two counts of first degree murder or three counts of first degree murder in Tammy, uh, JJ and Tylee were, was light. I thought this was significantly undercharged. So yes, they are glomping more on top of it. Good. Good. Hope you'll rot in prison, you asshole. That count is punishable to the same extent as the underlying crime on the conspiracy. On uh, the first part of that count, murder in the first degree, it's punishable by death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose a life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years. Okay, so as I said earlier, they have three choices they have they can go for the death penalty which they're still trying to decide i believe they have up to 60 days to decide whether they want to go through with that or they can impose life in prison with a possibility of parole like the judge said would be a minimum he would have to serve 10 years to qualify for even a parole hearing and then there's always the chance they could ask for a life without parole as well but it sounds like the judge is upholding that uh kind of fall back out of whole law of it being just regular life in prison. So anyway. It carries up to a fifty thousand dollar fine for both. It also carries with it up to a five thousand dollar fine and restitution. With regards to the second part of count one, conspiracy to commit grand theft by deception, that portion of the charge carries up to fourteen years in prison, up to a five thousand dollar fine or both. <clears throat> count one is an allegation of, uh, like I said, conspiracy to commit first degree murder and grand theft. The murder relates to the victim and the death of TR, a minor. Count two is a charge of first degree murder. Uh, it carries with it a maximum penalty punishable by death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years. It carries up to a $50,000 fine and up to a $5,000 fine and restitution. It relates to the death of the minor child, TR. Count three is a charge of conspiracy to commit first degree murder and grand theft by deception. That charge carries with it the same maximum penalty as count one. I think the uh, the theft portion here is the hiding of the bodies. Remember that he was charged with evidence tampering, hiding of the bodies. So I think that's what in relation to is as far as that theft. In other words, <clears throat> punishable by death or life imprisonment if the death penalty is not sought. Chad, you really shouldn't care if they send it you to death. I mean, you're just, you got that God tear. You're just going to step into the freaking veil anyway and assume you're placed at the right hand of Jesus and Joseph Smith, according to your books. The court shall impose a life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years, a $50,000 fine and or up to a $5,000 fine and restitution. The second portion of that charge 
is uh, conspiracy to commit grand theft by deception. That portion of the charge carries up to 14 years in the state penitentiary, up to a $5,000 fine or both. That count uh, relates to the death of the minor child, JV. Count four is a charge of first degree murder That charge is punishable by death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose a life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years, a $50,000 fine. So my guess is that he would have to serve a minimum of 30 years if those run concurrently, which I have a feeling they would. So they're probably gonna glomp all that together and say he has to serve 30 years 10 for each count before he's eligible for parole. And Chad, you look like an Oompa Loompa anyway, so I don't think you're in the best of health, so I don't think you're going to make it out of there, even if it is life in prison with parole. That count relates to the death of JV, a minor. Count five is conspiracy to commit first degree murder. That charge uh, carries with it the potential penalty of death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose a life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years, a $50,000 fine plus $5,000 fine and restitution. That charge. He better hope more people read his books if he's going to pay all them fines. Just saying. Relates to the death of Tamara Daybell. What'd you do to her, Chad? How'd you kill her? What'd you do to her? Is a charge of first degree murder. That charge carries with it uh, punishment by death or life imprisonment. If the death penalty is not sought, the court shall impose a life sentence, including mandatory minimum period of incarceration of 10 years. Carries up to a $50,000 fine and a $5,000 fine and restitution. The next count related to your case is count eight. It's an allegation of insurance fraud. They are going for the kitchen sink here, insurance fraud. Yes. That money you got from Tammy, you're going to have to give it back. You know, I'm not a believer, you know, as far as spiritual things and afterlife. But in just this case, I really wish there was such a thing. And I hope it was like... Patrick Swayze and Ghost, where you see the bad people kind of, you know, get swept away by demons and stuff. I hope when he does cross over that Tammy, JJ, and Tylee are there to grab him and cast him into hell. I, I just... <sighs> Insurance fraud under his charge carries up to 15 years in the state penitentiary. Fine of up to fifteen thousand dollars plus restitution. Count nine is the last count. It is also a charge of insurance fraud. It carries up to fifteen years in the state penitentiary. A fine of up to fifteen thousand dollars, or both plus restitution. Mr. Daybell, uh, the maximum penalties of all of those counts carry up to. Uh, they, they could all run consecutively, one after the other, or they could run concurrently. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Mr. Pryor, have, have you had a chance to explain that to your client? Consecu consecutively means one, then one, then one. That would be the longest time he could ever be away. If they run concurrently, they're all kind of glomped on. And, you know, one year is one year is one year in every case, which is why I think even if it does do that, they will probably require mandatory 30 years before he's out. Just saying. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Daybell, you're appearing here today with Mr. Pryor. Do you wish to represent yourself? Do you wish to hire an attorney, Mr. Pryor, or would you like to seek application of a public defender? Okay. Mr. Daybell has. Okay, so he is paying for him, or his children are paying for him. And if you got to give all that money back, Chad, how are you going to pay him? 
going into this matter, and that's the way I anticipate going to hearing it. Thank you. Mr. Daybell, is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. All right, uh, the next item of business is to set the arraignment. That arraignment will be in front of the district court judge. As of right now, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Wood, Ms. Blake, the court has available June the 9th in the morning. That's the date we will set that arraignment for. Uh, it's yet to be determined if that's going to be in person or via Zoom. That will be worked out at a later time and date. Also, the exact time of that uh, arraignment on June 9th will be set by the court and we'll send out final notice of that, but it will be in the morning on June the 9th. Does that work for everybody? That will work for the state, Your Honor. Yes, Judge. The plan on that. Uh, right now, the, uh, the warrant has set forth uh, no bail. Uh, Mr. Pryor, does that need to be addressed here today? No, Judge. Right. Is there anything else we need to take up here today at this initial appearance? So, basically, no bail. He ain't. He's not getting out. He's sitting in jail until everything goes by. So his arraignment, June 9th, I'll keep you posted on that. And with that, we're back with Lori, who, of course, has her mouth covered because God forbid she should get sick and die, uh, unlike what she subjected her children to. But anyway, let's check this out. Sixth of May, 2021. Good morning to everybody. We will um, call up case number CR 2221-1624, State of Idaho versus Lori Noreen Vallow. Miss uh, Vallow, Miss Daybell is present here with her attorney, Mr. Means. I have Miss Blake. Um, I have Miss Smith and Mr. Wood appearing here for the state. Uh, this is the date and time for an initial appearance. The court took a recess prior to the hearing today and uh, had a sidebar with counsel in chambers. Uh, based upon the information that was provided to the court, the court finds that there's some exigent circumstances as well as uh, a motion that was made orally to me to continue the initial appearance by the defense um, to a future time. Uh, a date certain has not yet been set. Uh, what is the state's position with regards to the motion? Of course, we don't know why they're asking for a continuance. Uh, maybe she's about to roll over on Chad. I can only hope that that's it, because I would like to see both of these people just throw each other under the bus and still get punished. That's my hope. But anyway. Made by defense to continue this initial appearance. Your Honor, the state objects to the motion to continue. Mr. Means, uh, it is your desire to seek a motion for continuance, correct? Correct, Your Honor. I couldn't hear you. We speak a little bit louder? Correct, Your Honor. Thank you. Based upon the information that was provided to the court, the court is going to continue this initial appearance uh, based upon the information that was provided to me, and um, we will set this for a time. So this judge seems like a pretty level-headed guy, so I'm assuming it was something kind of big. Um, the fact that the state was opposed to it probably then eliminates my theory that maybe she's about to roll over. Um, but uh, I can only assume it's something to do with her health or, or something that she should be catered to on. But anyway. For right now, we don't know that date and time, but uh, we'll get that set as soon as is feasible. Any questions about uh, what's going to happen here today, Mr. Wood? No, Your Honor. Mr. Means? No, Your Honor. We'll proceed from there. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. For Your Honor, we, we would quickly ask if Mr. Means has entered a notice of appearance on this case. Mr. Means, is it your intent to represent Ms. Uh, Daybell here in this case? It is, Your Honor. Do you plan on entering a notice of appearance to... So... They, this, I can tell Mr. Wood is highly, highly agitated about this, and I think Miss Blake is too. You can tell by the look on her face. But yeah, so Miss Daybell lives to fight another day, I suppose. I think it's, you know, weird that Chad just went ahead with his. I think maybe Chad in a way might have accepted his fate, whereas Lori's still going to fight it. Or Chad is just so smug that he thinks nothing's going to come of it. 
We don't know just yet, but in any case, that's what happened on the 26th. But we do know they have been charged heavily, and it looks like with some other things. I'm interested to know exactly the list of charges against Lori besides the two counts of first-degree mur murder. I'm sure there's going to be some insurance fraud. I don't know about theft, you know, the evidence tampering, but uh, surely there's going to be conspiracy to commit murder in addition to the first-degree murder and possibly insurance fraud on her. Whereas Chad's getting nine counts, she may get six. So we'll see. But in any case, I'll definitely keep you um, notified on what's going on. I'll keep doing digging. I have um, the Chad Daybell final three books uh, working on them for the weekend. So with that being said, I will see you soon. I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, keto and crime, out.